Hello, my name is Tim Aiken. I'm a director at Active Plan. In my previous video, I outlined the concepts and principles of our Kobe Data Browser project. In this video, I'm going to record the browser in action. I'm going to show you some projects and then show you it working across a variety of devices. The login screen. We've used our existing architecture to authenticate the users and when we edit any data or add any data into the Kobe data set then it's going to attribute that using our email address. So let's log in. Now we've got three projects here. One project is one that we're working on at the moment. Uh, it's a design for a secondary school and we have a brief that we're going to be using to associate back to the design. We've also got a building of a medical health centre which is managed by GB Partnerships and we've got some data that we're backloading from our database into, into that. We've also got a medical dental clinic from the Kobe Challenge. So this isn't our data and I've outlined what I changed in it uh, in the previous video and that's the one we're going to have a look at. So here we've got the details. I'm going to go to the edit screen so that we can have a quick look at what the web service is that we're using to get our categories. So here's the button that will access the web service, the web service, the classification or the classification service as I like to call it and I've got a variety of classification systems that I can choose from. I've defaulted it to Uniclass and the American version of Omniclass we've got 20, nearly 25,000 records in there. If I type in medical, this is a building and it's table 11 but we see we've got a whole series of things. I think this is the one there but if I click say it was the medical office building and you'll see it just updates. So by clicking on that and what we're going to be doing um, in a future project which we're already working on is getting from a product library the information and just feeding it straight into the Kobe data browser, Kobe data set. So we'll go out of this. If there are any documents that are associated to the facility we've got access to all of those here. I'm going to need to put some search criteria on here which we can do later. Uh, there aren't any attributes associated uh, to this uh, project. Floors, again American terminology, first floor is ground floor and uh, we'll come back to that in a moment. Systems and what we've done here is we've actually counted up and listed out the number of uh, equ equipment types, fixture types, component types, whatever you want to call it. The types, number of different types against each one of those systems is listed here. The number of component instances, that's where those types have been used. And then locations is really about whether they've got a record in the coordinate sheet. And we'll come on to why that's important later. Then what we've done for everything that's not in a system is I've looked at the category for category uh, record, split that back out into the coding system uh, so that we can see groups of types by their categories. And this is the nearest thing I could get to a schedule of equipment, which would then be easily sortable by whoever's responsible for these various things by just clicking on the category. So we can see we've got down lighters, we've got variable units, and we've, again we've done the same thing. We've counted up the components by the types, the where those component types have been used as components, and again if there are any locations, and we'll come back to that later. Then we've got uh, zones, and zones are just groupings of spaces, and we'll look at how that all works. And there's only one category of zone in this particular data set called occupancy zone. But if we had more, we'll list them out here. And we've done that in a, another project. And finally, contacts. Contacts is 
critical to making sure that you know um, uh, attributing ownership or responsibility um, to date to the different data so if you've got a component type then the manufacturer's email address will correspond to the record set here I'm going to go through validation because we're still working on uh, on doing that. Let's go back to the floors and let's dive into one of those floors. And as mentioned in a previous video, the floor can be displayed graphically as a box plan floor. So every space is treated as a rectangle. And if I click on this corridor here it might look like a corridor but in fact it's actually extents go well underneath a lot of the other spaces so the order in which you draw these things will depend upon how good this graphic does look but it's very orthogonal and you'll see in another project which is not an orthogonal building how this sort of representation doesn't work. You'll notice here that I clicked on that space and immediately it's then popped up a space details property pa uh, property menu. So I can click on any of the properties in here and access the information about it. I'm going to go back to the floor details and I'm going to choose the spaces layout. So again, this was illustrated how I did this. It's relatively straightforward and you, we can do it from 2D CAD systems. Uh, you can take it out of the IFC files. You could take it directly out of any of the CAD systems that are commonly being used. Revit, Archicad, Bentley, uh, Numancheck, Vectorworks, um, you name it, you can probably pull this information out store it all in the coordinate sheet and display this and it looks like a building plan because it is it's got a outline of the building and then it's got the spaces drawn on top of that and if I click on a space I get my space properties panel up now we haven't put on the text here of all those rooms we're not building a drawing we're building an information system but in order to find spaces I've got a list of all the spaces here and if I just type in sorry not type in if I click and select just come back out you'll see all I need to do is click on a space and it'll show me where it is and you'll see that we use this methodology a lot um, in, in what we've done and we've just transported this technology into this browser so let's go and have a look at the schedules I'm going to skip systems because they're fairly much the same and what I'm going to do is I'm going to reorder this I'm looking for equipment that's actually got a physical location on the floor plan in the coordinate sheet and I know that the modular air units are interesting components so I'm going to click on that one I've got a list of the unique types. There's only one type, uh, which is the air handling unit. I click on the air handling unit. I can get the details. I get a properties panel up now about those um, that particular uh, component type. I can access its warranty information, any attributes about that. We would expect all of this information to come from the product manufacturer. We'd like to see all that information be accessed through a web service. Uh, so that uh, we don't have to fill all this information in manually uh, either as a contractor or as a designer or as an, um, an installation engineer we've also got access to the maintenance tasks again this information here is primary is added by is provided by the manufacturer of the equipment and a installation contractor may add extra information in uh, to accommodate any peculiar any specifics of the installation of the system we've also got access to the spare parts now let's just see where that is actually on the floor so i've got a list here and it's now running up the floor plan so I've got that now showing me I've got two locations of that component type. So air handling unit one, 
air handling unit one and air handling unit two and when I click on the warranty information you'll see that the warranty information includes the component instance information about when it was installed and it's um, and the start date of that particular uh, warranty and it's going to be very interesting to see how people populate this information uh, from um, if they're thinking of using uh, their building modeling systems to keep it updated because we think there are better more efficient and practical ways of doing it we've got the type properties here which again are provided primarily by the uh, the, the uh, manufacturer as opposed to the component uh, or instance attributes which are the settings on that particular uh, piece of equipment so it shows us everything we need to know about uh, how many litres a uh, second of uh, chilled water get processed the, um, I'm assuming the LS is that uh, temperatures appear to be in centigrade pascals um, the uh, total wattage um, etc so we can either click on a space so if we click on a space we can get to the uh, component types that are inside that space by clicking on that so this is now telling me all of the types of components types that are in there including sprinklers air separators because this is a plant room so it's going to have a lot of kit if we click on the schedules we can see that kit broken down by the group category grouping so I could click on the pumps click on a hot water pump and see those two hot water pumps and so I can still get to data even though those pumps have not physically been been well I don't know whether those have physically been located but that's one of the things that we want to do in our systems area is actually then show all the kit on the systems we're not quite uh, uh, quite ready to do that it's an awful lot of work that's been done already and here I we can see uh, types by space now types by space let's find something that's got a lot more information in it so let's go back to schedules and let's go to doors and let's go to the uh, ground floor which is the first floor as I mentioned before let's have a look at the types and here we've got all the different door types so if I wanted to say where are door types A it's going to show me every room that's got a door type A door types B door types E G C H etc um, what we are going to do is make the pins go on and off as well uh, to make it uh, clearer and easier and again access the um, that door instance or access the instances through the, the uh, floor plan by clicking on the space finally I'm going to go through uh, zones and here we've got just one category of zones so if I just click on that I'm going to probably change this so that we come up with the floors first uh, those zones exist on the first floor so we're getting one floor showing there or a ground floor and again let's click on any of these spaces and you see how they're all grouped together so, okay we've nearly done about 15 minutes now so I'm going to pause here prepare the other information and we're going to look at the different types of web browser that we're supporting and that'll be the subject of the video that follows this one hope you're going to watch that thank you